So this begs the question, <clears throat> why do teenagers do stupid things? Well, NIH doesn't fund questions like that, so you have to phrase it in a way that makes them think you're doing something nerdy. Um, so neurological signatures, unique decision-making process, blah, blah, blah. Basically, why does my baby brother think it's funny to sled over the head of my older brother? And I don't know if you're in the front, you can see this, but they actually are both cracking up. Um, I don't know who took the picture. There are three of us in the... Yeah, anyway. Um, but why does this seem fun to a particular set of people? And um, whenever I would talk about development, I kept being asked the same question. Why do teenagers do the things they do? Why do they think these things are okay? Um, so I decided to try to answer it, and I thought, well, let's start at the beginning. Um, let's ask them. Um, so I came up with a very, very simple idea to um, ask them to come in and um, go into the MRI, and they got a yes button and a no button, and I said, I'm going to show you some different scenarios. I want you to read the scenario and just tell me, yes or no, do you think that this is something smart? Is it a good idea? Is it something good to do? I brought a couple. Um, they're kind of hard. You guys want to try? You want to try? Okay, so is this a good idea? Okay. How about this one? Okay. So, what's really great, I had 25 adults and I had 25 teenagers. Everybody got 100% correct. Um, biting a light bulb, drinking Drano, jumping off a roof, lighting your hair on fire. Everybody said no. Everybody said no to all the dangerous things and everybody said yes to all of the safe things. So problem solved. In fact, there are no differences between teenagers and adults when it comes to decision making. No. No, that's hardly the case. So this is um, time data. And time, when you look at the time um, for thinking about and deciding about good ideas, the lighter bar are our teens and the dark bar are our, our adults. And there's a difference. The teenagers are a little slower, so this is more time. Teenagers are a little slower, but this actually is not statistically significant. If we look at the bad or dangerous ideas, the, the ideas that should kind of turn your stomach, um, our adults take a little longer than they do for the good ideas because some of them are wacky, like swallowing a cockroach. Um, but there's this thing here. This is about 300 milliseconds. This is fantastically significant. Um, even though 300 milliseconds might not sound like a long time to you, 300 milliseconds gets you killed on a regular basis in decision making. And again, these are questions like lighting your hair on fire. <laughs> um, well, once, like I had a curling iron, it was hot, and it got near my head. No. <laughs> what are you thinking about? What could you possibly be thinking about? Um, so we looked at the brains, and again, this is an average of everybody put together. And what we found was that when we looked at where were the adults most active, think of the blue square study that I told you about. Our adults are most active in their amygdala and in their insula. Their gut sense told them, no. Their gut sense said, this is not cool, uh, this is not going to work out, I don't even, uh, yuck, yuck, basically. The teenagers, not only did they not have any activity in those regions, they had activity in a completely different part of the brain. Their activity was up here, in the frontal lobe. The frontal lobe, it's immature. Guess who's driving the car? The frontal lobe, who's immature. They're actually thinking about it. Now, this is problematic for adults, right? Because it takes away our most powerful statement. What were you thinking? <laughs> so I present this to you very gingerly, but I have a replacement statement. Don't worry. I have something that you can use instead. But it implies that our teenagers, they got the right answers. They did get the right answers because they thought about it. They thought about it. They thought about swimming with sharks. Now, a lot of people don't believe me. Um, so, um, so I think one of the ways that we can think about this is, again, I told you I'd give you a replacement. Um, 
What were you feeling at the time um, is, is not, you know, common vernacular, but it's something that I think you really need to figure out a way to talk to teens about. Not, they, all kinds of research shows they're very knowledgeable about what's safe and what's not safe. It's not an issue of knowledge. It's an issue of not feeling, not having that gut instinct that is automatic in you as an adult. They don't have it yet. They haven't had enough experience, and we'll talk a little more about that. Um, it's a learned response. It's that cockroach response. It's the part of your insula that has been trained up to be aware of the dangers and the pleasures in your environment. Um, now, as I said, a lot of people don't believe this finding, so I brought some of, some of my um, kids. This is from the Lara News Hour. This is um, some, some outtake footage. Good idea, bad idea, to go swimming with sharks. Now, do you see a picture of this, of, of, of sharks, or, and anybody can take this answer. You want to take that answer? Well, sort of, just like a little picture of what could happen, but it sort of depends on if you have like a buddy you're swimming with, then it would be more safe. You think it's a good idea or a bad idea? Uh, um, sort of both, because it could be fun, but you could get hurt too. What do you think? Um, it could be a bad idea if you were doing it alone, but it could be like a good idea because it would be a whole new experience if you had like someone guiding you and you really knew how to deal with sharks. Watch this girl closely. Watch her closely. Well, I kind of agree with Haley that it it's, would be a bad idea if you were alone, but I've heard like read magazine stories and stuff of people who have got hurt by sharks when they're swimming, so it kind of scares me a little bit, but it could be a kind of an interesting experience. What do you think here on well, It could be both bad or good, but um, I think it'd be kind of cool swimming with sharks, just it depends like if they like hurt you or whatever, like it'd be a bad idea if you're like by yourself, like I agree with Haley for that one. Okay. So that's top level English in seventh grade. Um, future leaders of America. Now, there are a lot of things happening in this clip, so let me unpack a couple of them for you. Um, our teams were all tested one at a time. Um, there's a very strong, what I like to call Haley effect in this clip that a lot of you probably picked up on, which led to our next experiment that I'm about to show you. But before we go there, um, did anyone notice anything different about the third girl who spoke? Say again? Yeah, she actually abstracted a little bit. She had, and, and the first thing she says, the first thing she says in, in response to the question, is it dangerous to swim with sharks? The first thing she says is, I agree with Haley. That's her answer. Her answer is, I agree with Haley. Because in Vermont, where this was done, what, great whites are not a problem at present. But Haley is. So <laughs> Haley gets a little more of the frontal lobe than the great white shark. But unlike the other girls, and this girl's voice is a little deeper, she's a little taller, she looks a little more mature to me. What she does, she abstracts, she has a visceral response right in front of you. She says, I've heard things, and I've read things about people who've been hurt by sharks, and she grimaces, and her eyes go side to side. And she says, you know, so it kind of scares me. And then, and her voice even cracks, she says, but it could be an interesting experience. <laughs> um, and for any of you who don't speak eighth grade girl anymore, let me translate for you. I'm still agreeing with you, Haley, so don't hate me. I just, I'm still in full agreement. Um, that's all that that was about. Um, but if you have a frontal lobe that's not 100% coordinated, are you really going to waste it on a great white shark? No. You're going to save it for Haley. And that's part of what led us to our next um, set of experiments. 